In the previous video, we had an overview of how the linked list data structure works with both head and tail pointers. In this video, let's implement it in JavaScript. Before we begin, I want to mention a few points. First, this is going to be a slightly longer video as we will be implementing multiple methods. Second, I have already set up some code in Replit to get us started. We have the node class and the linked list class. The linked list constructor, as you can see, now has a tail pointer initialized to null. We also have the isEmpty, getSize and print methods, which are pretty straightforward and copied over from before. If this seems new, please do make sure to watch the previous 10 videos that cover linked lists in JavaScript. Third, I have typed out the function signatures for the four methods we will be implementing in this video. Prepend, append, remove from front and remove from end. If this is clear, let's get started with the prepend method. Now I'm going to be slightly fast paced compared to the previous videos as you should already have an understanding of the linked list operations by now. Nevertheless, after each method, I will go back to the slide where you can pause and understand the code written with the help of the visual representation. Now to prepend a value is to add a new node at the start of the list. We are going to begin by creating a new node. Next, we handle two scenarios. If the list is empty, this dot is empty, we point both head and tail at the newly created node. If the list is not empty, we connect the new node to the head of the existing list. So node.next is equal to this.head and then we reassign head to the new node which is the first node in the list. Finally, we increment the size by 1. Pretty simple as you can see. Please make sure to have this code typed out as I will now switch to the slide to help you compare the code with the visual representation. Make sure you go line by line and understand what it is responsible for. Alright, now that we have prepend implemented, the next method is append. That is, inserting an element at the end of the list. We're going to begin by creating a new node. Next, we handle two scenarios. If the list is empty, we point both head and tail at the newly created node. Exactly the same as prepend method. However, when the list is not empty, we point the existing tail node to the new node and the new node becomes the tail node. The last node in the list. Finally, we increment the size by 1. Let's also make sure to pass the value argument when creating a new node. Appending with a tail node is very simple compared to appending with just the head node. You don't have to get a reference to the last node by traversing from the very first node. Please make sure to have this code typed out as I will now switch to this slide to help you compare the code with the visual representation. Make sure you go line by line and understand what it is responsible for. All right, with insertion out of the way, let's now focus on deletion. First up, removing a node from the front. 
we have two scenarios. First, when the list is empty, we simply return null as no node can be removed. However, if the list is not empty, we begin by getting hold of the value in the head element as head is always at the front of the list and is the node that is going to be removed. So const value is equal to this dot head dot value. Next, we point head to the second node. This will effectively remove the first node from the list. Finally, we decrement the size and return the value. Please make sure to have this code typed out as I will now switch to the slide to help you compare the code with the visual representation. Make sure you go line by line and understand what it is responsible for. All right, for our final method, let's implement removing a node from the end of the list. Heads up, this does involve obtaining a reference to the node previous to the tail node. We have three scenarios for this method. First, if the list is empty, we return null as no node can be removed. If the list is not empty, we begin by getting hold of the value in the tail element as tail is always at the end of the list and is the node that is going to be removed. Next, for scenario 2, we check if there is only one node in the list. If this is the case, we set both head and tail to null as the list would be empty after removing the node. If the number of nodes is greater than one, we proceed to scenario three, where we get hold of the node previous to the tail node. And the logic might seem familiar. First, create a temporary pointer called previous, which starts at head. Advance the previous pointer till we reach the node previous to the tail node. So while previous.next is not equal to the tail node, previous is equal to previous.next. Once we reach that previous node, change the node's next pointer to null and assign tail to that previous node. This will effectively remove the last node from the list. Finally, decrement the size and return the value. Please make sure to have this code typed out as I will now switch to the slide to help you compare the code with the visual representation. With that, we are now ready to test our implementation. Begin by inserting new nodes to the list. Append 1, 2, and 3. Prepend 0. And call print. Let's also log the size of the list. If we run the code, we see zero, which is prepended, and then one, two, and three in that order. The list size is four. Next, let's remove a node from the front. You can see zero has been removed from the list. Let's now remove from the end as well. Run the code. 
and you can see both 0 and 3 have been removed. One from the start and one from the end. All our methods are working as expected. As you can see, removal from the end has a linear time complexity, whereas insertion at the front, insertion at the end, and removal from the front all have constant time complexity. And because of this, both stacks and queues can be implemented using linked lists. Let's see how to do that in the next video. Thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.